In the previous video, I finished dealing with ceilings, but I got one more thing to add. I thought that I'd thrown my roller away for good because I was using the airless spray gun. But uh, subsequently, in looking at the ceilings, I realised that uh, I, in the large rooms particularly, where the angle of light is uh, very narrow across a long space, that I wasn't getting maybe as much coverage of uh, minor faults as I would have hoped. And so I put on a coat of the same paint that I'd put on with the uh, air, airless spray gun with a paint roller. And the difference was quite surprising. With the roller, I got a much more matte finish than with the airless spray gun. So if I was painting ceilings again, I would definitely use the airless spray gun for the undercoat and for the first top coat because of its speed and ease of use and then for the final top coat I would use a roller to get the texture of the roller and get the maximum matte coverage on the ceiling. I've left a section of the ceiling here not done with the roller so you can see the difference that I'm talking about. I'm hoping that uh, you can see uh, where I've gone around most of the ceiling with the roller and got that matte coverage and then that section in the middle has got a completely different sheen finish to it that's what the airless spray guns left so obviously for the best coverage and hiding of faults in the ceiling top coat with a roller and while we are going backwards in the previous video I also mentioned and showed you one of these hammering tools that you use for locking in the ends of your laminate floor planks and I did indeed make my own. The reason I did was I found there was a problem levering off the wall with the chisel where I was trying to do that where there was an internal sliding door or a pocket door as you can call. The frame on these things is not very rigid and when I levered I wasn't getting a full leverage onto the plank because the frame of the internal cavity door was bending. But this tool is brilliant for this job because you can hammer it out that way and really lock those planks in. So I do recommend if you're going to do laminate flooring you either buy or make yourself one of these steel end hammering tools. In my previous video I also mentioned that most planks have a fragile side that you don't want to hammer even with a soft block of wood. But as one of my viewers of that video mentioned, as, and as I knew already, you can use a plank off cut to do the hammering. That way you get a matched edge. It's not as safe as using a soft wood block because this edge can damage that one. But if you're only going to do gentle hammering, the way to do it is to use an off cut and the block. If you just hammer that, you're going to destroy it. And you can hammer sideways that way on the fragile edge, either on the side or on the end, using an off-cut and a block of wood.
put a slow combustion wood fireplace here, right in the middle of this wall, and build a false chimney up. But I've since changed my mind because I realised all the heat would be down one end of the room, and I thought, well, I'd rather put the fireplace in the middle of the lounge. The advantage of that is that the fireplace will then serve as a room divider between the dining room and the lounge room without uh, congesting it in it. There will be heaps of area to walk around it. Um, but the problem with putting a fireplace here is that you only get flames on one side. And then I found this on the internet, a double-sided fireplace, which means I can put it there and have flames being seen from the dining room and flames being seen from the lounge room and it's quite an efficient heater so instead of the uh, wood heater being down against the wall it's going to be smack in the middle of the room and be a, a key feature. Because I want to put the fireplace here I've got to cut out this uh, yellow tongue timber flooring and put in cement sheeting that's fireproof so that it'll meet building regulations. 